We all take medicine. This morning, I took a Theraflu. I'm getting over a cold. You might have taken an allergy pill. Whatever the case may be, what if I told you that medicine didn't necessarily work for you? In a 2011 study by the Personalized Medicine Coalition, up to 50% of antidepressants were found to not work. In the same study, up to 70% of asthma drugs didn't work for people who need these drugs to breathe. When I heard this statistic, I was shocked. What is wrong with modern medicine? How can we change medicine, and when will that change happen? Before I answer any of those questions, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Ben Kampa, and I'm a senior at Upper Arlington High School, but I spend most of my time post-secondary at The Ohio State University, where I work in the Sade Lab, where I sequence genes like I am on that slide. In my research, I learned about personalized medicine. But what is personalized medicine? It's the future of medicine, where 100% of pharmaceuticals will work for the people who need them the most. It's genome-based medicine, that is in short, the right drug for the right person at the right time. By using genomic information, scientists will be able to predict which drug works best for your proteins. But hold on a second. How do drugs and proteins even work? Take, for instance, the green drug. It could be a pain receptor. Green protein, excuse me. And the blue drug, say a Tylenol. Drugs and proteins work together like a lock and key. The green protein is a lock, and the blue drug is a key. If they have the right shape, the lock will turn and your body will heal. But if they don't, say if your genome caused a slight change in the shape of your protein, nothing will happen. The intermolecular forces between a drug and protein won't even exist. But how do scientists know what drug works best for your protein? It all goes back to DNA. Single changes in your DNA are transcribed into RNA and then translated into protein. Proteins are you. Run your hand through your hair like you're Justin Bieber. You're not Justin Bieber, you're protein. Wiggle your fingers, talk, yawn, think. Everything you do is protein. You are your proteins. And by using this information, scientists will be able to discover medicine that works for you, works for me, and works for the person next to you. But how will this change medicine? Medicine will look like this electronic access to your whole genome. Scientists will use this information to predict what drug works best for you. But Ben, this sounds far-fetched. This is 10, 20 years in the future, right? It's happening today. In 2012, the FDA released Kaleidico, which is an awesome drug that treats the G551D mutation of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is that terrible disease you see pictured in the top of the slide where a thick mucus builds up in lungs. In the G551D mutation, a single change from a glycine to an aspartic acid in the chain of a protein doesn't allow the protein to go to the cell membrane like it needs to, to allow ions to flow across the cell and prevent mucus. Kaleidico works by interacting with the specific shape of the protein. This is personalized medicine in action. It cures the G551D mutation of cystic fibrosis. This is great news, but to you and me, odds are we don't have the G551D mutation of cystic fibrosis. So when will personalized medicine become a part of our life? The answer is very soon. This chart shows the cost of sequencing a megabase of DNA. 10 years ago, it cost $10,000 to sequence 10,000 base pairs. That would estimate the cost of the whole human genome to be $3 billion. This fall, the $1,000 genome is being released. This represents a holy grail of science because it represents a feasibility point for everyone who needs a human genome can have it. $1,000 in the context of millions spent on healthcare isn't that much. So how will this change medicine? This is what medicine looks like today. It's reactive medical care. By the time doctors realize you have a disease and can diagnose you, your symptoms are already so severe that it takes a while to find the right drug. And once you find the right drug, it might be too late. The cancer could have spread, heart disease could have crumbled your heart, and you might die. 
This is what medicine looks like with personalized medicine. It's preventative medical care. Scientists will know every predisposition to disease you have, be able to screen for those symptoms that you might get, and ultimately give you the right drug at the right time for the right person, you. This will change disease. But you might be thinking, if scientists know so much about my genome, can other people use that information? In 2008, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act was passed, which prevents insurance companies from stealing information about patients. To you and me, insurance companies don't matter much. We're all under the age of 25 here. But what does matter is privacy. We always hear about Facebook stealing information. What if scientists could steal our genetic information? This needs to be addressed. In 2012, we're constantly reminded of the political race. You might have heard there's a debate tonight. Looking back on the past history of presidential elections, we can see how personalized medicine might have changed the course of history. In 2008, John McCain didn't only compete against Barack Obama, he competed against his own health. People were concerned he might have a heart attack in office. Had he released a personal genome showing a clean bill of health, he obviously survived all four years. What would have happened? Most of us are too young to remember who Ronald Reagan even was. But did you know he developed Alzheimer's in the late term of his presidency? Had the public known that via a genome before he was elected, would he have even been elected? Who's to say? I'm not here to dwell on the past. I'm here to show you the future and how you can incorporate personalized medicine into your life today. This is a pedigree. It's a family tree. You all know your grandparents. Maybe you, some of you have even met your great-grandparents. But do you know what health problems they have? If you ask your parents tonight who in your family has heart disease or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or cancer, you can plot that information and share it with your doctor. This is vital because you can look out for certain signs and symptoms that you need to be aware of. You can go home tonight and really make a chart like this. Each black dot is a family member with a disease, and you can predict your chance of having the same disease. This is the old school personalized medicine. In the future, personalized medicine will look like this. Electronic access to your whole genome for your doctor to give you the right drug at the right time. This is what a human genome looks like. That represents all three billion base pairs of one man's genome. This is the fourth personal genome ever and represents a milestone in genomic information. By using charts just like this, your doctors will very soon be able to give you detailed information about your health and what you can do to live a healthier life. Ultimately, personalized medicine is about tailored drugs. It's the right drug for the right person at the right time. By using personal genomes, doctors will create a medical care you haven't even thought of yet. Admittedly, there are ethical dilemmas, but if we can decide as society what's right and how we should deal with personal genomes, this will lead to better health care. Personalized medicine is better health care, and it's the future of health care. Thank you.